Okay, so what sort of telescope would we need to see continents on an exoplanet? So the idea is we have some exoplanet. Let's say it's in a fairly near star about 10 light years away. And it's got continents. And let's say the continents are about a thousand kilometers across. That's sort of being a rough continent scale, at least on Earth. And we want to observe them from the Earth. So here's our telescope. We won't be able to see is a continent here. There's an ocean over there. Now there are two things we'll need to be able to achieve that. The first thing is we need to have enough angular resolution to tell the difference between light coming from the continent and light coming from just off the side of the continent. So we need angular resolution. But there's a second thing we need. We need to actually be able to pick up enough light to see the continent. The continent is reflecting sunlight, and those photons are bouncing off. We need enough of the photons to arrive here to detect something. If it's only one photon 100 years, uh, it's going to take a very long exposure time to see anything. And in fact, the continent would have rotated around, so you can't see it at all. So we need enough photons to reach us. So let's look at that in turn. Let's start off with the angular resolution. So we need to achieve an angle theta, which is a thousand kilometers, 10 to the 6 meters here, and 10 light years, which is 10 to the 17 meters there. So if you remember the small angle approximation theta in radians is just 10 to the 6 over 10 to the 17. So that's 10 to the minus 11 radians. If you convert that into degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi, then to arc seconds by another 60 times 60, you find that comes out as about 2 micro arc seconds. If you remember, a ground-based telescope can achieve maybe 1 arc second or 0.6 of an arc second. Space telescopes get down to about uh, 0 0.05, so this is way, way better than any telescope on space or the ground or with the optical optics can achieve at the moment. So how are we going to do it? Well let's assume we use a space telescope so it's limited only by diffraction or a telescope with very good adaptive optics. We know that the the limiting theta for diffraction is given by the wavelength over the diameter of the telescope. So we know theta uh, let's say we work at optical wavelengths, so wavelengths, um, it's not much, if you work at smaller wavelengths you get better resolution, but there's not much point of working at X-ray wavelengths because continents don't normally emit X-rays. So we're kind of stuck with the wavelengths that's going to scatter light out, which means optical. So let's assume we're working at about uh, half a micron, which is sort of greenish light. So 10 to the minus 6 meters. So then diameter of the telescope has to be equal to with d up there, lambda, so 5 by 10 to the minus 7, that's that, divided by the limiting angle, 10 to the minus 11, which comes out as about 50 kilometers. So we need a telescope that's 50 kilometers across an optical telescope 50 kilometers across. Biggest in the world at the moment are 10 meters. Biggest in the next generation will be maybe 40 meters. That's an awful long way beyond anything we can do at the moment. This is a problem radio astronomers had for a long time. They needed telescopes of enormous sizes. What they do is instead of having one telescope that's say 10 kilometers across, they have a whole bunch of small telescopes spread over many kilometers, a so-called interferometer and they combine the signals from the different telescopes to synthesize much bigger ones. And in principle that can work in the optical as well. In fact, there are a number of test beds around the world, optical interferometers that do this. So in principle, a 50 kilometer diameter telescope, you know, one mirror, 50 kilometers across with an accuracy of a tenth of wavelength of light, sounds pretty scary. But in principle you could have a bunch of small telescopes scattered over 50 kilometers, maybe floating in space, beaming a light together where it's combined by some inter interferometer in the middle. So maybe it's not totally ridiculous for a future free-floating space telescope. So that's the angular resolution limit. But that's going to do us no good if we're not picking up enough photons. So how many photons are we going to pick up?
So, you've got a continent, and it's maybe got an area of a thousand by a thousand kilometers. So that's about 10 to the 6 square, 10 to the 12 square meters. And it's reflecting sunlight. So we've got the sunlight coming in. Well, let's assume it's got as much sunlight hitting it as we have on the Earth, which is about 1 kilowatt per square meter. Actually, 1.3 kilowatts per square meter is a solar constant. So it's about 1,000 watts per square meter times 10 to the 12. So that means the continent has a luminosity, assuming all the light is reflected, of 10 to the 12 times 10 to the 3. So it's 10 to the 15 watts. It'll probably be less than that in practice because some light will be scattered off the atmosphere and it won't reflect everything, but maybe it would if it's an ice cap. But that'll give us a rough figure. So we can therefore work out the flux at the Earth, which is given by the normal equation of the luminosity over 4 pi distance squared. This d is not the damage of the telescope, it's the distance to the planet, which we're assuming is 10 light years away. And that comes out as about 10 to the minus 20 watts per meter squared, which is very small. You're not going to power a light bulb with a solar electricity from that. But how many photons is it? Photons, after all, are pretty small themselves. Well, the energy of a photon. is equal to h nu, where h is the Planck constant and nu is the frequency. Frequency is also the wavelengths divided by the speed of light. Oh, sorry, speed of light divided by the wavelength. This is because you've got a wave. The frequency tells you how many crests go past per unit time. They have a wavelength lambda, so lambda number of waves length of a wave times the number of waves per second the frequency must equal the speed of light. Thus, frequency equals speed of light over the lambda, the late wavelength. So, uh, that comes out for optical light at an energy of about 4 by 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon, which is not that different from this. So what that means is, per square metre of telescope, you're going to be picking up a photon from this continent every two or three seconds, roughly speaking. Now you're going to need at least 100 photons to say you've really detected something, possibly more if there's a background signal. But what this means is, the number of photons is not particularly limiting. Even with quite a small telescope with a few square metre area will pick up your hundreds of photons in less than an hour or so. So, Enough photons isn't a problem, angular resolution is a problem, so probably the best solution is a whole bunch of small telescopes spread over some big distance in space, 50 kilometers or maybe a bit bigger, um, combining the light in some sort of interferometer. Um, telescopes individually don't have to be very big because there are, you're getting enough photons in uh, quite a short time, so these might only be a few square meters. So not doable now, but free-floating telescopes in space might be able to image this in the future.